So we've talked about how to actually calculate molar mass, but let's actually see how it's used because scientists don't just calculate molar mass because they think it's fun. We actually have a use for it. So we're going to see how molar mass is used in actual calculations. Okay, and the easiest way for us to do that is just to go ahead and look at a problem that we could see for molar mass and using it in a natural calculation. So here we have an example problem. It says how many moles of H2O are in 125 grams of H2O. Now this problem is in English. It's written out. It says uh, exactly the words that it wants you to use. But if we're gonna calculate something, we need it to not be in English. We need it to be in math. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna calculate, or sorry, we're going to translate this English into math. How many? Well, that's a question. And in math, when we are trying to solve for something, when we're trying to find a value, we generally look for x. So that how many, that question word, turns into x. The unit attached to the question word is just restated. How many moles of H2O just becomes x moles H2O are in. That's our connection word saying to us that these values will be related somehow, some way. So that becomes our equal sign. And then we just go ahead and re-restate the number that was actually given in the problem. So x moles means how many moles equals are in and then 125 grams of H2O. So we need to get from grams to moles. So we need a conversion that has both grams and moles in it. That will be our connection, our little bridge between the two values here, because we do know that they are uh, related somehow because we do have that equal sign. So let's think, what, what thing did we just learn how to calculate that has both grams and moles? Oh, that's right, molar mass. Molar mass has both grams and moles in it, and that is how we're going to get from one to the other. Okay, so our molar mass that we've uh, seen so far has just been written in a straight line, but it's grams per mole. That's a fraction. And in math, when we're dealing with fractions, we don't normally write them out straight in one line. We write them vertically, one over the other. So we're gonna go ahead and do that exact same thing with our molar mass. Now remember that molar mass is a ratio, it's not a true fraction. So even though these look like fractions, they're not, they're just a ratio. So this is just me saying for every 18.015 grams of water, there's one mole of water. I can also say for every one mole of water, there's 18.015 grams of water. This is the same thing as me saying for every two girls I have three boys or for every three boys I have two girls. I'm presenting the same information, I just changed the uh, order in which I said it, but it doesn't actually change anything. This doesn't change the value at all because this is a ratio. Okay, so that's all well and good, but now we actually still need to solve that equation. So we are going to be picking the version of the ratio that we just found that allows us to cancel out units. Now remember in math, if something is on the top of a fraction and on the bottom of a fraction, we're able to cancel it out. So we're gonna look at our actual initial setup here. And I see we can pretend like this line is uh, the actual line for um, a division sign here. I see that grams is currently on the top. Well, if I want grams to cancel, that means I need grams on the bottom. So I'm gonna pick the uh, ratio that already has grams on the bottom so I can cancel this unit out. Well, I see that my right uh, version of the ratio has grams on the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to my actual dimensional analysis train track. Now, some of you might not be familiar with what this is. It's not your normal uh, operations that you're used to seeing in math, 
We don't have any true operation signs. We just have vertical and horizontal lines. Well, in math, you're used to horizontal line, meaning divide. Well, what's the opposite of horizontal? Vertical. Well, what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So that means that this vertical line, which is the opposite of this horizontal one, is going to be multiplication. Okay, and this is just how we clean up our uh, math because this can get long and uh, wordy. And so getting rid of any unneeded uh, operation signs helps us to make sure that we don't uh, crowd our, our, our visual field there. Okay, so now I see that I have grams on top, grams on bottom. And since I have them both on the top and on the bottom, I'm able to go ahead and cancel that unit. Now the only thing that's left in the actual math, the only words that are left in the math, is moles of H2O, which we stated at the very beginning to be the unit that we were actually looking for. So I know that I have made it to the correct unit and I can stop finding new conversion factors and I can start actually plugging it in and doing the math. So how we actually use the train tracks to tell us what to do with all of our operations is we are going to multiply everything that's on the top and divide by everything that's on the bottom. So in the calculator, it would look like this, 125 because it's on the top, multiplied by one because it's on the top, divided by 18.015 because it's on the bottom. So I have that, and once I actually plug that into the calculator and get a value, I'm gonna write out every single number that comes out of that calculator. This ensures that if in the end I get the problem wrong, I can go back and check to see like, oh, did I just forget how to round? Or did I actually do the problem wrong and I need help, okay? So the number that comes out of the calculator uh, when I plugged 125 times 1 divided by 18.015 was this number, 6.938662226. It's not a very nice number, so what we're going to do is we're going to round. Uh, and today we're just going to go ahead and round to two decimals because it's a, it's a nice enough number where two decimals will give us uh, that value. Okay, so... When we round to two decimals, how I like to round is I like to underline the last number that I actually care about, and that's the one, two, second number after the decimal. And then I draw a visual arrow to show that I am looking over to my neighbor to see if I need to round up or not. Now eight does make me round up, so I go ahead and round it to 6.94. This number is naked though, I can't report this number. It's not su suitable for public viewing. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I add the units. The units should match everything that's left in the actual problem, the only English that's left in the actual problem, and it should also match what you told me at the very beginning that you were looking for. If your number does, or sorry, if your unit does not match this, something has gone wrong, you're not done. Um, you may have done too many steps, not enough steps, We'll have to figure that out if your units here do not match. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the unit mole H2O because at the very beginning I said that I was looking for moles of H2O. So I'm going to make sure that my final answer is going to be in moles H2O as well. And I'm done.